Hello guys, this is Yugendra and today I'll be talking about HLOOKUP in Excel with a small demo. HLOOKUP is an Excel function that is used to look for data in a table. If a table which is organized horizontally has a significant number of rows, like say a thousand or more, then I must say this is where HLOOKUP makes a job easier to look for values. In this video, we will look at the syntax of HLOOKUP function and how HLOOKUP can be used to perform various operations using a small data set. For this video, I'll be using Google Sheets instead of Microsoft Excel just because it is free and easy to collaborate. And keep in mind that whatever formulas that are available in Excel are available in Sheets as well. Let us now go ahead with the demo. Now let us look at the definition and the syntax of the HLOOKUP function. The H in HLOOKUP stands for horizontal and it is used to search or look for values in a table that is organized horizontally. Coming to the syntax of the HLOOKUP function, always remember that a function in Excel or Sheets starts with an equal to symbol and the function name over here is HLOOKUP. And now if you click on the help icon, you'll get the arguments which are supported by the HLOOKUP function. So there's search key, range, index, and is sorted. Is sorted is an optional argument. By default, the value of is sorted is true or one. Search key is the value that we have to search for. Range is the range that we want to consider for the search. The first row in the range is search for the key specified in search key. Index is the row index of the value that we have to return. The first row in the range is numbered as one and so on. The is sorted or the search options argument is to convey the type of search that we want to perform on the table. So there are two types of searches. One is exact match and the other one is approximate match. Approximate match is when the argument is true or one and the exact match is when the argument is zero. Now let us look at the data set that will be performing our HLOOKUP function on. So here's the sample data set that we will be using today. So this is the number of units sold by each employee, which is the sales data set. So here we have the months of each year from January till December and the names of the employees and the number of units they've sold in each month. So, and there's the total units sold as well. Here we have the bonuses in rupees, which is an empty row. This will be calculating in the later part of this video. And here we have the total number of units sold and the respective bonuses in rupees. So for 100, the rupees in bonus is zero. And for 150, the rupees in bonuses is zero. And so on until 350, the total number of units sold is 350 and the rupees in bonus is 60,000. So now let us move on to some basic operations using the hash lookup function. Let's say if you want to find the total number of sales done by Kathy in the month of August, that can be done using the hash lookup function. So here, this hash lookup function. And then the value that you want to search for. So let's say Kathy. And the range is the whole of this table. So from here till the end, end row until December. So that is H14, A2 to H14. And the row index will be August. So that's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Because the index always starts from the starting of the range. And now since it's, uh, since it's exact, we'll keep it as zero itself. So that's zero. Now if you press enter, the value is 18. Let us see if this is correct. So Kathy is over here. August month is over here. So the number of units sold by Kathy in the month of August is 18. Now this is using a string. The HLOOKUP function here is using a string as a reference. We can use a cell as a reference also that can be done using this way. 
So let's remove the string over here. Now, instead of giving a string as an argument, let us select the Kathy row itself or the column. So now the cell reference is B2 over here. Let us look at the value that we'll be getting. The value doesn't change at all. So this can be done in two ways. One is using a string and the other is using a cell reference, which is D2 over here. Now, always remember that HLOOKUP function gives the first occurrence of a particular value. So let us try using the string again. So here, let us give it as Kathy. Let's edit over here itself. So now you can see that the first occurrence of Kathy is over here and the number of sales done in the August month is 18. So what if we want to get the value of this Kathy? So that can be done by using an extra character, like say the initial of Kathy 2. So that's R maybe. And here you can give it as Kathy R. Now, if you want to change the value over here, instead of Kathy, give it as Kathy R in the string. Now, as you can see, the number of units sold by Kathy R in the month of August is 25, which is over here. Now, always remember that the HLOOKUP function in Excel or Sheets is a case insensitive function. We'll look at the example of that using this name. So Kathy R, let us change it to lowercase sensitive. So that's smaller letters, Kathy R. And now, as you can see, the value for August doesn't change over here. Let us see if it's the same value for Kathy R. So August, it says 25, so it does not change at all. Now, this can also be done using a combination of lowercase and uppercase characters. So that will be C, small a, capital T, H, Y, and R. And still the value doesn't change. So this means that the HLOOKUP function in Excel is case insensitive. Now let us fill these values using HLOOKUP function and the fill handler. So for April, Charles, the number of units sold by Charles is over here, it's 24. So we need to get 24 over here. So that will be HLOOKUP. And the search value is Charles. The range will be from B2 to H14. And since we want this range to be constant for all the values, we can use dollar symbol between before the cell values. So the dollar symbol here indicates that it's the absolute cell reference. It won't change no matter what. So if we use fill handler to fill the rest of the values, the range doesn't change for those values as well. And the row index will be five since it's April. So here it's one, two, three, four, and five. So April, it's going to be five. And now since it's exact match, the search option will be false. Let us see what the value is 24. So that's right. And for July, the index changes. So we'll have to fill that manually. So that will be, let's copy this formula over here, here, and then uh, use it and change the row index to eight change the row index to eight. So that will be 14. And for August, it's going to be nine. The row index will be nine. Now using these three values, you can fill these values also using the fill handler. So that will be drag and drop, go to the corner of the right hand side and then drag the cursor. So you'll get the value. So it says do not find value 31 in the HLOOKUP function. So that means it is searching for E2 over here itself. So that's Char it is searching for Charles. So that will be instead of Charles, we'll be using Daniel. So that's G2 instead of E2. I think I've selected the Charles column itself. So let us look over here and then change it to G2 instead of E3. Now, as you can see that the value is 16 over here, let us change this to 
let us use fill handler to fill these values. So it'll be 40 for uh, the month of July. Let us see if it's 40 for the month of July. Uh, no, it isn't. So let us see what seems to be wrong over here. Okay, instead of G2, it is taken H2. So let's change it to G2 again. And since it's the month of July, it is going to be 8. The row index is going to be 8. So now the value is 22. Let us see if that is right. So for the month of July, Daniel has made 22 units of sales. So here, let us change it to G2 again. And then the value over here, the row index over here is going to be 9 for the month of August. As you can see that the values are filled over here. And now we can use wildcards also to, you know, match uh, using the hlookup function. So for Charles, let us say, if you want to get the value of Charles for the month of April. So, I mean, let us change this to October to, you know, get the values. They'll be different. And since you want it for October, let us change it to, let's say over here, instead of E2, let us use Y character instead. So that's going to be, let's say char and since we are using the while character, let us say a star or an asterisk. So that means the first four characters that we've, we're searching for is char and it can be superseded by any number of characters. So since we're looking for Charles, it is superseded by L E S. So let us see if this function works. Since we are looking for the month of October, let us change this to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So since the row index is 11, let us see what the output is. So it says 33. Let us check if this value is the same as this value. So the month of October, Charles has made 33 units of sales. So yeah, we can see that the wildcard matching also works. So let us do that for Daniel as well. So it will be instead of this, it will be, let's say, let us use the wildcard at the beginning of the character now. So that will be start and ampersand and the last three characters, let's say, IEL. Let us see if this works now. Since it's the month of October, the row index changes to 11, like we discussed earlier. So let us see now. Here the value is 20. Let us see what the value for the month of October is for Daniel. So for the month of October, as you can see, the number of units sold by Daniel is 20. Now coming to this value, which is bonuses in rupees, we'll be calculating this for all the employees using this column or the row. So here we have the total units sold and the bonus in rupees for the corresponding total units sold. So here we'll be using the approximate matching instead of the exact matching. So let us use the horizontal lookup function to fill these values. So it'll be H lookup and the value that you want to search for. So it will be 303 range is here. So it will be from 100 till this value and you can use it as an absolute cell reference because it will be the same for every uh, value or every total unit sold. So it will be $G, $21. And then since you want to look at the bonuses in rupees, so it is the second row that we want over here. So that will be 2 over here. The row index will be 2. And since we are looking for the approximate match, we can take the value as true. So you can see that the total number of units sold is 303 over here. So what horizontal lookup does is, and remember that these values have to be sorted in ascending order. So the bonus in rupees, the total units sold have to be sorted in ascending order, no matter what. That's how the hedge lookup serves through the values. So over here you can see 100, 150, 200, which is sorted in ascending order. So what hashlookup does is it goes through each and every value from the starting and 
once it goes to 300 it will go to next value which is 350 since the value of 303 comes before i mean between 300 and 350 it will give the value 300 the value of 300 to this value so that's 50000 to the value 303 let us fill this for all the other uh, columns using the fill handler now let us check if 30,000 is the correct value for the total units sold, which is 292. So here HLOOKUP, what it does, it does is it scans through every column. So from 100 till 300, because it is close to 292. So, and then since 292 is less than 300, it scans, I mean, it goes to the previous column and assigns that value to 292. So the value, which is getting assigned to 292 is the value of 250 so for 250 the bonus in rupees is 30,000 that is what is being assigned over here now let us check the same thing for 316 so hedge lookup what it does is it scans until 350 because the value of 316 is between 300 and 350 and then what it does is, is assigns the previous columns value which is 50,000 to the value 316. And the approximate matching works only if these values are sorted in ascending order. So here you can see that the values are being sorted in ascending order from 100 to 350. And this is how the approximate matching in HLOOKUP is being done. That brings us to the end of this video. I hope you're clear with the concept of HLOOKUP function. We have looked at the various operations such as exact match, approximate matches and how to use wildcards to simplify our search. If you guys like this video, make sure you hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you and keep learning.